Okay, so what you're looking at in front of you is an upgraded traditional leaf sprung suspension. What do I mean by upgraded? Well, traditionally, you would have just a steel triangle equalizer right here with no suspension built into it. But I did an entire video talking about why you should upgrade to a suspension equalizer. Now, all of these are suspension components, but this is a suspension equalizer because it utilizes a rubber bushing right here, and this gives you upwards of like two to three inches of travel, plus the ability for it to tilt and rotate on this axis right here. Now, this is upgraded because it helps mitigate through a rubber bushing the shock and vibration and harshness that would normally transmit from the road when you're driving over it to the chassis of the RV. And it reduces a tremendous amount of that shock that would normally transfer to the chassis of your RV. So this is also an upgrade because it has the heavy duty shackle straps that are a half inch thick and greasable wet bolts that you can actually put grease into and it squeezes it into the bronze bushings that are inside of the leaf springs right here. And this is what one of those bronze bushings looks like. So this right here is a highly upgraded suspension. You don't have to get the Moride system. There are several other very legitimate, very safe, and very reputable brands such as Dexter and Lippert. But Moride is probably one of the most common and one of the most popular upgrades you will see on a lot of higher end fifth wheels and travel trailers, such as Alliance units, many Grand Design units, many Jayco units. So this is definitely a reputable and very common system that manufacturers will put to upgrade the suspension on a new RV. Now, if you are buying aftermarket and you don't have something like this, this is also a really good upgrade for your trailer. And if you don't have a suspension equalizer in here, I definitely recommend getting one. But but the question people are going to ask is, why not torsion? So I'm not going to answer that question the way you might think, because I'm going to say torsion is an absolutely fantastic suspension setup. How does the torsion system work? Well, I don't have a torsion system here in front of me, so I'm going to have to use illustrations. But essentially, it eliminates all of this right here. You don't even have an axle that you would normally have on a traditional RV with leaf sprung suspension. On a traditional RV like this, you would have an axle tube either on the bottom or on the top of the spring. If the springs were on top of your axle, they would be called overslung suspension. If they were on the bottom of the axle and the axle's right here, they would be underslung. But for what you're seeing here, we don't have the axles, of course. On a torsion suspension, you still have an axle tube. It's a long square axle tube that spans the same width typically as your traditional axle, except it ends right at the end of your frame rails. And inside of it are these rubber cords. In some cases, it's not even a rubber cord. They just fill the cavity with rubber. So you have an inner square solid piece of steel that's surrounded by an outer square tube with these rubber cords that are inside of it or just completely full of rubber. And you have a lever arm that comes off of the end to your hub, which then connects to your wheels and your tires and everything else that rolls on the ground. And what ends up happening is when that lever arm spins or twists that inner square tube against the rubber that's between it and the outer square tube, it creates resistance. And that resistance essentially is the equivalent of leaf springs or your suspension components. It's a very reliable system. It lasts a long time, but there are a couple challenges and reasons why RV manufacturers just don't completely go to this system if it's better. The first one is it's not really serviceable, which means if for some reason one of those rubber cords fails, which they can do, just like any piece of rubber, eventually the rubber can get too soft and it can wear out and it can get brittle. Because it's protected by that outer square tube, it's not going to be exposed to UV light. Similar to these, I mean, these aren't really going to be exposed to any excessive UV light and cause deterioration like that. But over time, that torsional load that's being applied to it and bending and twisting against it will cause it to eventually break down or cause it to get a little too brittle or fall apart. And if that happens and your suspension essentially goes out, it's almost unrepairable. I don't know of any circumstances where you've been able to repair a torsion axle once it's failed. You typically have to re-weld or re-bolt a new axle in place to replace it. And most of these axles come as one solid tube. So you have to replace the entire axle for both sides even though only one side has failed, if that makes sense. There are some systems that come with two separate halves for each side, and you may be able to swap a system out like that, but I'm not 100% sure because I haven't seen it done. Typically, those systems are used for retrofitting on trailers. Now, the other challenge that you also have with those systems are the fact that when they do go out, they're very expensive. Again, not serviceable, 
very expensive to replace. And one of the reasons why it's so expensive to replace is because it's typically welded in place by the manufacturer who installs it. So if you have an Airstream, if you have some of your higher end boat trailers, if you have some of your higher end horse trailers that have torsion axles, they typically are welded to the main frame and they have to be cut off and you have to re-weld a new torsion axle in place, which again can cause other issues down the road if it's not done properly or if it's done in a rushed way as just part of an emergency fix. Now, some some folks are going to say, why do brands like Airstream, why do brands like Rockwood, why do brands like Flagstaff and several other brands utilize torsion axles if this is a more serviceable setup? Well, part of that is because of height. So on a lot of these trailers, they sit relatively low to the ground. And a torsion axle, that, that arm that comes off of it, that lever arm, isn't very long, which means that your airstreams typically sit significantly lower to the ground than most traditional travel trailers. Your horse trailers are designed to sit lower to the ground so it's easier to walk your horses up the back than typical trailers. It is considered an upgraded suspension. But on a lot of RVs, especially fifth wheels and travel trailers, they sit relatively high off the ground. And a torsion suspension system isn't ideal unless you put a lot of frame structure additions, a lot of boxed sections beneath the I-beam to get that suspension close enough to the ground so it will actually give you the ride height you're looking for from a fifth wheel hitching perspective or a travel trailer hitching perspective. Now, a lot of people will say you look at brands like Airstream, which obviously is a great brand. You look at a lot of other high-end brands that utilize torsion axles. There are a lot of extremely high-end brands that don't utilize torsion axles. A good example of that would be DRV. You can get a DRV with leaf sprung suspension. You can get it with independent suspension. And you can get it with a couple different flavors in some cases of independent suspension. Lux is another example of that. They make independent suspension as an upgrade. Typically, it's going to be the more independent suspension system which uses like rubber shear bushings which is a great system if you're looking for independent suspension but all of those systems you have to be cautious because you lose weight distribution and equalization across your axles if you eliminate a traditional leaf sprung suspension system which means if you're going up an incline or a bump or some type of a step up and you have a torsion axle system the axle that is going up that bump while the other tire gets off the ground or comes off the ground is carrying the entire load of that trailer's weight. So you have to keep that in mind. Some frames aren't designed for that. Some frames can't handle that. That's why traditionally when it comes to RVs, to see a torsion axle suspension system typically means the RV is going to weigh less than 10,000 pounds. That's usually what it is. There are some instances where there are some larger Flagstaff and Rockwood units that might weigh a little more than that if you get a fifth wheel. But most of the time, when you see a torsion axle system, it's going to be on a lighter weight trailer, typically in the five to 7,000 pound range max. And it's been designed from a frame perspective to be able to carry the weight across one axle, even though you're likely even overloading that axle, but temporarily if you're going over a step up or a step down to where one axle may come off the ground or the tires of one axle may come off the ground. Because again, that one axle will have to carry the entire weight of the RV when that occurs. Whereas when you use an equalizer, the equalization between the two, some of that load will transfer to the other axle, thus minimizing the strain that one axle will have to carry in those scenarios. Now, a lot of people will say it's more reliable to go to a torsion axle system, and that is true. I'm not going to say even arguably. It is a more reliable setup, fewer moving parts, really no moving parts except for the inner square tube that's torsionally twisting against the rubber beads. But there's no components like these. You still have some components in the system, of course, like your hubs and stuff like that. But you do eliminate a lot of components that can eventually or possibly wear out prematurely. When you upgrade to a higher end system, like a Cree 3000 or a Dexter Easy Flex or some of these other ones, you have another wear area and that's going to be the rubber bushing. That's going to be any points that could possibly also move and wear out over time. So you have to keep that in mind. However, the serviceability of this suspension system is one of the reasons why it's so popular. Now, a lot of people will say RV manufacturers don't do it simply because it costs a lot more. That's not entirely true. So a torsion axle does cost more than a standard axle. It does. No doubt about it. 
But when you add up the cost of a standard axle with the leaf springs, with an upgraded suspension equalizer, which a lot of RVs come with, with the heavier duty shackle straps, greasable wet bolts, all the components that you see on most of your mid to high end leaf sprung trailers, the costs are about equal. There's not a huge difference. And in many cases, actually going to this system plus the heavy duty shackle straps, all of these components make this system cost slightly more than a torsion axle. So. If manufacturers put a traditional leaf sprung suspension system on with an upgraded equalizer, the heavy duty shackle straps, greasable wet bolts, in my opinion, the system becomes just as good, if not better, for an RV than a torsion system because of that equalization, the ability for you to equalize the load to some degree whenever you're going over uneven terrain and some of that weight needs to transfer to the other axle. Torsion axles are great. I think that the application that they're currently on is a good application. Using them on RVs, using them on certain types of RVs, it makes sense so long as the manufacturers of that RV are aware of the different loads that could occur over different types of terrain. That's the key here, and most of them are. So most of them will build the RV to be able to withstand those loads and for the suspension to be beefy enough to be able to take those types of scenarios without damaging the suspension, the axle, or the frame of the RV. But the reason why you see this is because it's very serviceable, it costs roughly the same, especially when you have the upgraded suspension, and it equalizes the load. That's the key. Um, when we did the collaboration with Coachman on our Brookstone, we actually asked them if they could put the Dexter or the Lipper 8,000 pound rated torsion axles on it. And the folks at Lippert, the engineers, came back and absolutely said, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that, even though it would be super cool, it'd be great for video content, because you do take the chance that on a really large, long fifth wheel, that some of those loads could be exerted to the frame because you don't have that weight distribution and equalization, and you could damage the frame of the RV or overload the pin of your vehicle at certain times. That all makes sense. It all actually makes sense when you think about it. So... So yes, I do believe torsion axles are an upgrade. I do believe they are great. I do believe that they do have their place with a lot of RVs, but there are a lot of high-end RVs like Arctic Fox who utilize leaf sprung suspension and they make a very high-end RV. There are brands like Lance who use leaf sprung suspension. They make a really high-end RV. There are a lot of brands that utilize leaf sprung suspension because they would prefer the serviceability and the equalization over the technology you get from a torsion axle. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry, I just had the Cree 3000 sitting in front of me the whole time. I really like this setup, and I think it is a great setup if you plan on upgrading the suspension on your RV. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, let me know how you feel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.